Well, for us here at home, it's been an incredibly bitterly cold week, but for folks down south, historic snowfall has had crippling impacts on travel. And really, it seems like just about the entire country is feeling some wintry conditions late this January. Meteorologist John Birchfield here, and we're going to be talking that historic snow down south and also breaking down some of the numbers behind the cold and the Arctic outbreak that we have felt here at home. If you're not already subscribed, you can head to WTOL.com slash email for the latest Climate Friday newsletter straight your inbox each and every week. So let's talk about the extreme cold here at home and also break down some of the historic snowfall stats from parts of the southern United States. Now, amazingly, some of these southern cities have more snow on the ground and have received more snow this winter than Toledo here in the Midwest. Lafayette, Louisiana, one of the biggest snowfall reports, an incredible 10 and a half inches. Milton, Florida, with a state snowfall record of 10 inches. The Florida Panhandle getting significant impacts from this wintry weather. New Orleans, Orleans, eight inches essentially shutting down the city. Mobile, Alabama receiving eight inches of snow as well. And other cities in Florida like Bellevue with eight inches of accumulation. Now what's amazing is when you compare that to Toledo, we've only gotten five inches of snowfall over the course of the entire winter. Who would have thought that cities in Louisiana and Florida would have double our snowfall out of just one storm system? A couple other big cities, including New Orleans and Mobile. Houston saw parts of the metro that got six inches of snow. Pensacola about five inches and towards the Carolinas Wilmington with about five inches of accumulation. Here's that swath of snow visible on our snow depth map. And you can see some of the heavier snowfall amounts, including Houston over towards New Orleans, Mobile, Pensacola, and up into the Carolinas. That is where some of the heaviest snow occurred, where you see those brighter purple colors. Snow depth across the Great Lakes and the Midwest region does show you some snow in the Buckeye State, but not nearly as much as has occurred in the southeastern U.S. Across northwest Ohio, that snow depth is now just about a trace to one inch, slightly higher amounts near the lake shore. But overall, much of the snow melted away before temperatures really turned cold. Now what's amazing is due to that snow, it actually was visible from outer space on satellite imagery. You see that white color there that indicates the snow that's visible from satellite and you can even see some of the rivers and the formations of bodies of water um, where there's those cracks in the white and that shows you where there's snow. Now down there, those are clouds that are visible on satellite imagery and that swath of heavy snow visible in the southeastern United States and parts of the Gulf Coast as well. So where do we stand for snowfall this season and how does it stack up to where we should be in the snowfall department? Our seasonal snowfall is a meager five inches. Despite how cold it's been lately, we've been hard pressed to receive any sort of meaningful snowfall. Normally through January 22nd, we have 17.1 inches of accumulation on the season and that now puts us at one foot below average in terms of snowfall across the region. Toledo has really been one of the big losers as far as missing out on these big snowstorms and other cities have gotten hit quite hard. Erie, Pennsylvania has seen significant lake effect with now going on 100 inches of snowfall. Cleveland's actually a little bit below average for snowfall at 21 inches. Indianapolis, they saw a decent snowstorm with about 16 on the year and Detroit, Michigan also on the lower end of the spectrum. But you'll notice Toledo, the only one with a single Single digit snowfall amount. And meanwhile, on the other side of Lake Erie, Erie, Pennsylvania, 92 inches on the season. Now we have certainly had some very cold temperatures. If you look at our Wednesday morning low, temperatures dipped down below zero. Wednesday morning even got down to minus nine in Hillsdale, minus four in Wauseon, and minus three degrees in Toledo. Across the region, you can tell where we're one of the coldest spots on the map, although temperatures really did get down to very chilly values in New York and Washington. Back towards New Orleans, after that snow fell, temperatures dropped down into the 20s. The coldest temperature of the season officially recorded at Toledo Express Airport minus three and that doesn't even account for the wind. The wind chiller that feels like was minus 15 to minus 25 and we didn't quite get the record. That record is an impressive minus 12 set back on January 22nd of 1936. Now what's interesting is these minus temperatures have been very hard to come by and since 2022 we have only had a trio of days that dipped down below the zero degree mark minus three Wednesday morning the day before minus 
minus one. And then the last time we were sub zero was January of 2024. And before that, you have to go all the way back to December of 2022 to find a sub zero temperature reading. And we have back to back days this week that dip down below the zero degree mark. In fact, these sub zero temperature readings have been so rare that since 2019, there have only been eight sub zero lows over the course of about five years, and we had back to back ones this week. So really hard to come by these sub zero temperatures, and it's very likely that we don't see another one for the rest of the season with how the forecast is trending. Now, due to these cold temperatures, we have seen rapid increases in Lake Erie ice cover. This chart shows you the ice as of January 22nd of 2025. Now the red line, that is our normal ice cover. Normally by late January, Lake Erie ice cover is at about 45% and we have seen a rapid spike close to 60% ice cover. You'll notice we started off the season very slow and then in January we saw a few brief spikes followed by drip dips and overall though the trend has been heading in the upward direction. These are representative of the icing that occurs when we briefly get cold and then kind of a little bit of a thaw out. However, with this Arctic blast, ice cover has gone up rapidly and now we're at about 58%, which is above average in terms of Lake Erie ice. Lake Erie ice officially at 58% as of this recording on Wednesday, and you can see that visible uh, with over 5,000 square miles of ice that are on Lake Erie. We're also keeping an eye on ice cover across other lakes in the region. Lake St. Clair is now almost entirely ice covered, 99.94% ice. And over the Great Lakes, ice cover remains about average. However, that number is going up drastically, as we've seen on Lake Erie, due to the rapid drop in those temperatures. Now, even though it has been very cold lately, we are expecting a flip in the weather pattern that features a return to some milder conditions. The long range outlook brings that cold off towards New England and the East Coast, so the Eastern Great Lakes are going to feel that cold, although temperatures are expected to cons turn considerably milder, especially across the Northern Great Lakes and the upper Midwest areas north and west of us, where above average temperatures are expected, and it's very likely we don't see another sub zero temperature for the rest of the season. Whatever wintry weather is in store, we'll keep you updated. If you're not already subscribed, WTOL.com slash email. You can get that information straight to your inbox each and every Friday. We'll see you next week.